Today is April 16th, 2008, and I'm going to show all of you out there on YouTube watching exactly how I go about doing a live shot. So, got the live truck here. We're going to head out and we're going to do the shot. We're going to be on the north side of town. This is the back of our live truck. Here's the air compressor for the mast. Snake for running video and audio. Battery charger, which is also our DC power supply. Batteries for starting the generator and our generator. And here's our dish. Double check above us to make sure that there's nothing in the way of the dish going up because the last thing we need to do is to be electrocuted or something like that. Make sure the wind's not blowing too bad. I'd say right now we're gusting up to about 20, so we're under criteria. Here's our control panel. Make sure our power is flipped on. Power up the generator. Flip on our various things. That switch works. Flip on our antenna. Pointed in the direction of the station, which is kind of uh, off to the southeast. We've got our dish aimed, so we're ready to mast up. Find the air compressor. Push up. And up she starts to go. There it is. Our mast is up. All the way. So, I can tune in now. CBS News Channel 5's News at 5.30 starts now. Well, the rock band backs out of Animal Rights Group takes yet to ask Cheyenne Frontier Days to change its ways. Good evening, I'm Robert G. And I'm Tara Vreeland. Showing animals respect and kindness, also known as Shark, came to town to show and tell why Matchbox 20 canceled their concert at Cheyenne Frontier Days. News Channel 5's Alex Hannum joins us live from Frontier Park. And Alex, I understand there were quite a few people that were lined up at the library to hear what Shark had to say to me. Yeah, Bob, it's here about 50 people on each side of this hotly contested issue packed into one of the smallest rooms in the Laramie County Public Library this morning. One side wanting animal rights, the other wanting to retain Western heritage. Just a quick note about some of the video you're about to see. Some of the images may be just a little bit disturbing, especially for younger viewers. Hot shotting, wild horse racing, steer busting, and jerk downs. All practices, the animal rights group Shark says they want banned from Cheyenne Frontier Days. We don't have the power to bring rodeo down. Rodeo will bring itself down if they will not make changes, if they will not follow their own rules. And Hindi says he did invite officials from both here at CFD as well as from the city of Cheyenne to attend this morning's meeting. He says he also plans on staying in town through tomorrow morning. And he says he's willing to meet with anybody who wishes to talk to him about this issue. We'll continue to follow it. For now, though, we're live at Frontier Park. Alex Hannum, CBS News, Channel 5. Hey, thanks a lot, Alex. Cheyenne Frontier Day says they'll continue to celebrate our Western heritage. News Channel 5's Heather Hamilton is also standing by live with more on CFD's reaction. Heather? Tara, CFD was not available for comment on camera today, but Cheyenne Frontier Days did issue this press release earlier this afternoon. In it, they say that Cheyenne Frontier Days reviews all animal practices and is always open to suggestions that there are more than 60 rules in place for proper handling and licensed medical professionals are on site, fully trained in livestock care. They also say they regret the accusations made because they're just simply not true. The relationship between uh, the people in that arena and the animals is probably as intense as any relationship people have. Uh, there is a genuine appreciation. This is one of the oldest sports that is a teamwork between a, a person and an animal that's out there. Uh, and it's just, the inhumane is, is just flat untrue. 
Bud speaking for CFD, who was in Leander today. He says that the claims made by Shark have already been addressed and therefore just no longer apply. And as far as entire events being pulled because of one request, he says that won't happen. But again, that Cheyenne Frontier Days is open to further suggestions. We'll have more on Cheyenne Frontier Days reaction at 10 o'clock tonight. For now, reporting live from Frontier Park, Heather Hamilton, CBS News Channel 5. Thanks a lot, Heather. The entertainment agency that works with CFD. Have you ever driven around and seen one of these things on the side of the road and wondering how exactly does it work? Well, we're about to show you. Meet John Barry, a veteran of his craft, and he is going to show you how it all works from behind the scenes. For this situation, the newscast calls for a live shot at the Lubbock Pancake Festival, and John is on assignment for a weather live shot with KCBD meteorologist John Robinson. When bars and tones are transmitting, the TV station sees this. A simple test pattern to confirm a successfully transmitted signal. But it's the reason we do live shots is to show things. Number one, to show something. And this particular day we're doing a weather live and our weather talent's gonna be here previewing the Lions Club Pancake Festival, which is happening tomorrow. What you're about to see are the behind the scenes of a live shot that most people never see. One more story after this, here we go. Here we go. What up next? Well, actually, we're not making them yet, but you know, we come ready made, the line to Love does. They brought me in some ready made ones just to get people enthused about the thought tomorrow. And you see all the items down here where you get ready the oil to put on the cookers tomorrow. They'll take this, full of batter, and they'll put it inside one of these, and then we'll be making the pancakes as we release the batter out, and then you'll have a finished product that'll be nice and fresh, not out of the freezer like that, and some syrup, butter, and everything else that goes along with it. We're going to talk about it in more detail, but again, Civic Center tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. In the meantime, let's check the Doppler. No activity in the immediate area, but that could be changing over the weekend. We're going to find it partly mostly cloudy, windy, but we should be a little warmer, mid-60s tomorrow. We'll talk about the weekend weather. It could be a little bit of thunderstorm activity, Karen, strong winds, and even a chance of some snow by early in the week. And we'll be back to talk more about the pancake festival as well in a few minutes. Yes, sir, you are clear. All right. We're clear. All right. Um, let's see, what are we going to be doing? Okay. Um, I'm Sarandis Jackson, ABC 3340. I'm working with Dennis Tugman our photojournalist over here. Hey Dennis. And for some reason Dennis and I always get the assignment that we uh, really, really, really have to go above and beyond. We always get to do stories. So we are in uh, Riverwood. Rainwood Lodge. Rainwood Lodge. Estate. Uh, Ross's and Camp Oliver's. Right. And it's a lot of flooding. So we are going to be talking to residents all day. We're going to do a story about this. No, I don't think. Paul and Doris Kane are saving what they need. Swelling floodwaters came pouring into the home Tuesday night. All is calm now. Continues. Those uh, turbines from Smith Lake Dam have been open. 
They are, uh, it's a bit underway now, the water release. We want to take you to some video this that was shot or opens up. These turbines open up that you're looking at right now. The water will move on down the Warrior River uh, into this area. Now, residents were concerned about some additional flooding, but Alabama Power Company is saying that there is no need to be concerned, that they've got everything under control. The lock is supposed to open up to kind of cause a, a break and relieve some of the water that's in this area. Now, people who live here in this area in Walker County tell us this afternoon that they are pitching in to help one another out by moving belongings and saving anything that they can from yesterday's floods. Floodwaters couldn't stop neighbors helping neighbors in the riverfront communities. And the turbine is going to run through 7 o'clock, according to Alabama Power. Again, they're saying that there will not be any additional flooding. Uh, we want to join my colleague, ABC 3340. news from NBC 12. And this morning we continue to follow that breaking news coming from Prince George where crews have been on the scene most of the morning after a logging truck overturns. It happened along the I-95 North. And we have just learned that the ramp just opened up in the last few minutes. So let's go to Curtis McLeod. He's live on the scene. What's the latest out there, Curtis? Well, what I can tell you right now, a stark contrast to what we saw earlier, we're actually right here where those logs did spill onto the uh, median here. Take a look behind me here. You can see these logs here. The truck has cleared up, but these logs are still here on the ground. They're still waiting to have these logs moved out of the way, out of the, uh, out of the uh, median area here that we are on I-95 heading north on exit 45 in Prince George near South Crater Road on the border of Petersburg. Take a look here. You'll see it's kind of foggy out here, but there are those uh, service utility vehicles as well as state police still on the scene here getting ready to uh, let the flow of traffic come back through here. But it is still pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uh, significant debris here with these uh, logs still on the ground here, as well as some of the, the insides of this truck. Uh, truck that turned over here glass everything on the on the side of the road here now we understand that they are still working to to clean all this up and that's what's uh, the the next step in this process that's what's going to happen here now but everyone is okay there was one person inside of that vehicle he is doing okay that truck has been taken away and the roads will open here momentarily we continue to track breaking news in Chesterfield County. A mother, father, and their two children are dead this morning after a quadruple shooting at a home. And we know this all happened off of River Road in Matoica in the 5700 block of Fox Maple Terrace. Right now, crews are still very much conducting an active investigation about what led up to this shooting. Curtis McLeod is live on the scene right now with the latest on this disturbing story. Good morning, Curtis. Good morning, Heather Gray. Uh, there's still a very active scene here on Fox Maple Terrace. I'm going to step out of the way so you can take a look at that scene. Detectives are making their way through this home, making their way through this entire property to put the puzzle pieces together and find out exactly what happened here. 502 the time, and we sent uh, Curtis McLeod out there to Caroline County to get a better vantage point. Uh, Curtis, we saw you earlier. It was coming down. I would imagine that it, it's still coming down as we see you there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's still coming down, and it's really cold out here, guys. I want to show you, you can see a lot of accumulation here on the ground, snow pretty much uh, all over the place here. We are just on the outskirts of Caroline County, making our way back towards the Richmond area, and you can see snow is pretty much everywhere. It's all around this gas station area here where we are in Caroline County, so much so I want to show you what I did over here. Take a look at this. You see, I actually got a chance to write NBC 12 in the snow here. I just love this. This is just awesome here. You can see I did that about maybe two minutes ago, right before you came to me, and now it's almost filled in a little bit here. So uh, a significant buildup of snow accumulation coming down here in this area. Hurricane Maria invaded Puerto Rico. Frustration is growing. Relief supplies are arriving on the island, but getting them to the nearly three and a half million people in desperate need is close to impossible. Power is still out, and the FCC said today more than 91 percent of the cell phone sites are out of service. David Begno is in San Juan. Anthony, Puerto Rico's governor told us there is food, water, and medicine just sitting at the port waiting to be delivered. So we went looking for it, and we found it. 3,000 shipping containers just sitting here since Saturday with enough supplies to help a half a million Puerto Ricans. It's sad and it's frustrating as Jose well. Ayala is uh, vice president for Crowley Shipping Services of Puerto Rico. Is there anything else you can do to try and move it out faster? 
there is no way unless trucking companies start showing up. So we asked the governor, Ricardo Roseo. Where are the bus drivers? The bus drivers are either caught on their houses, uh, their buses have been destroyed. Uh, uh, we haven't reached communication so that they can know that we've released all of the red tape. Most of the roads in Puerto Rico are still blocked or damaged, and the entire island remains without power. Another problem, fuel shortage. Gasoline has become like liquid gold. And lineups to buy fuel for generators stretch for miles. This is the third day Mary Beth Cardenas has waited in line. We can't get supplies, we can't get food. There are places that are open that are selling food, but we just can't get to them because we don't have the gas in the car. There are lines to buy every other essential too, like cash to get gas. We saw Jennifer Rosa in line at the ATM, where patience is in short supply. We are American citizens. We're not better than anyone, but we're not worse than anyone. That's what, what, that's what is so hard for us to understand. Why it's taking so long for Congress to act right now? But we were there when it arrived 50 miles south of San Juan in the town of Salinas. FEMA brought food and water. And the USS Kearsarge is now floating a few miles offshore. 20 helicopters and Ospreys are ferrying supplies to the island. That gas station that we were at today, it has run out of fuel. But get a look at this. People are already lining up, sitting in their cars, waiting for tomorrow's shipment. Anthony. David Begno, Gary thanks. is traveling with the president. Major, good morning. Good morning. The operative word for President Trump during his time here at the Asia Economic Summit? No. No direct talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin, no meeting with any other head of state here, and no discernible progress on one-on-one -on -one trade deals meant to replace the multinational Trans-Pacific Partnership Mr. Trump withdrew the United States from earlier this year. Now the president and Putin did have their casual encounters, shaking hands and talking briefly as they walked alongside one another to the group shot of many heads of state gathered here for economic and security talks. Now, one of the reasons Mr. Trump did not meet with other heads of state here is many of them were involved in their own conversations on putting together a successor to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which means if those talks are successful, that deal, designed to be an economic counterweight to China, if it's achieved, will not include the United States. Anthony? Major Garrett in Da Nang, Vietnam. Thanks. For more team coverage on this snowstorm, we head out to Gage Norum in Kalamazoo. Gage. Thanks, Melissa. Now, while many area businesses like the hotels and other places are staying busy, that's definitely the case here at uh, Kalamazoo's Holiday Inn. Now, the Kalamazoo's Radisson joins the Holiday Inn in offering special rates for standard travelers and those travelers can get special deals on rooms for a night or two and they say that if they're joint in offering special deals and also they're putting them over to stay a night or two and then they go to the Holiday Inn and other places and then they can go to reporting to different places. Now store management also say the people started packing in last night at Myers and Definitely, they're staying busy, and they didn't start slowing down till this afternoon at Meyer. We don't want to get hungry. As you can tell, we like to eat, so we want to fill up a little bit in case it gets bad tomorrow. I'm history. Meyer management says it expects to have more business coming up, and they'll always stay open no matter how bad the snow gets. Now, VFI Waste Services of Western Michigan that we talked to earlier says that it's going to have to cancel, even delay some of its services to area customers, but just put out your trash on the curbside and they'll pick it up weather permitting. Report, reporting live in Kalamazoo, I'm Gage Norm with news from where you live. Remain back to you. Gage, thanks for that report.